somebody does something and hurts somebody, you can point to, okay, that had a human cause. Okay, this person did something. Father Kevin, we're supposed to be made in God's image and likeness, so where this moral evil from within us come then, if, I mean, if that's how we're created, from this image and likeness? We're, we're, we're fallen. We have fallen because of sin. Again, the ultimate rule of what evil comes from, both moral evil, but even natural evil, the ultimate, the ultimate root of it comes from really, you know, human beings and angels as well misusing their the free will that God created them to be. So, so God created with the intention that we exercise our freedom in following Him, because He could have made us like robots. He could have made us where we all were like you know uh, players in a computer game that do exactly what the computer programmer tells us to do. But then there would be no moral goodness. There would be no moral goodness in that case. So, so what He wanted, God obviously wanted us. He wanted to create a universe where people willingly and truly willed to follow him and willed to love him as opposed to having to be forced to love him. Now the downside of that is is that is that there's going to be people who are going to misuse that gift and misuse that thing. So we can't say that God, even in permitting evil, directly willed it. Um, Aquinas makes it, Thomas Aquinas makes a distinction between God's antecedent will and his consequent will. What that means is, is that his antecedent will, God wants us all to be good. God gave us the commandments, he made it very clear that he wants us all to do good things, he wants us all to be good people. But his consequent will is what we would say is what God permits, because God wants us to you so from the beginning he wants us he wants all of us to be good he wants us all to follow the commandments to love jesus to follow his teachings and everything but his consequent will is is that he will allow us to make the choice to do these things so what god wants us to do is to exercise using and blessing with his grace oh thanks about is you know cooperating with the grace that god gives us that's where we exercise and use our freedom but the mysterious element of all of this is, so, so we can't say in any way that God wills evil, even though he permits it, because he sees the greater good that we exercise and use our freedom. But the, the, the mystery, though, of where it comes in with all of this is, is that even creation's fallenness is connected with, ultimately, human followers. That God created the universe, the material universe to be this sort of communitarian project. Because remember, what, what did God do when he created Adam and Eve? What he said to them is, he said, be fruitful and multiply. He gave Adam the, the, the honor of naming the animals, which in Hebrew thought, both of which were divine activities. Only God can give life. Only God gives life. And in Jewish, a sort of in Jewish theology and, and in Jewish thought, to give something a name is to have control over it or to have sort of a dominion over it. If you're able to give something a name, the idea is that you now have sort of a you, you sort of some semblance of of what you know of sort of autonomy over. That's why we're stewards. Exactly, we over a stewardship over it. But now here is here is Adam and Eve now saying no to God. You know, because remember, what was the central temptation of Satan to, to the, he says, if you eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will become like God. Another fact that to keep in mind in that is the phrase good and evil is actually a Hebrew phrase meaning all of reality. We think of it in good and evil, but but in terms of how 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 the people of the time, how the ancient Israelites would have heard that phrase of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, meant to know everything. And remember, in Jewish thought, to know something is also to have stewardship over it. So what did they want to do? They wanted to have the knowledge and dominion of God. They didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to submit themselves to God. They wanted to be God. And that's the root of all. Sin. And now the real mystery in all of this is, is that creation also fell. That the, the world is not the way, even physically, is not the way that it's supposed to be. That in terms of, now again, we can talk about earthquakes or whatever. I mean, a lot of times people kind of, uh, a more kind of uh, contemporary, um, certainly contemporary scientists would look at this and they would say, you know, there's no way. How can you, you know... Look, I mean, even, you know, the tsunami, well, okay, you know, there were the plates and east, you know, they graved, and then, you know, an earthquake happened, you know, this, there's, 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 you know, there's science, there's, there is a scientific explanation of what happened, 
but there's a deeper picture that our faith paints that says that, you know, it doesn't mean that Adam and Eve wouldn't if they kicked a rock, you know, that they wouldn't have said, ow, you know, but, but, um, but the idea was that they were created to live forever. And you can see it in the sense of what we believe of what happens when we die. When we die, our body is committed to the ground. Our soul lives forever. Well, why would a God have created us only that our soul to live forever? If he created us, to, because if that was the case, why didn't he just make us as souls? Why did he give us bodies? Obviously, death of the body is a result of sin. And, the, and, and part of the part of the so so the idea is is we were created to be live forever and that's part of what we believe at the end of time when our Lord comes again our souls and our bodies will reunite and we will be able to be you know we will join in and celebrate in the resurrection so if that's the case if human sin has clearly had a problem in the human body we can see well then it also Again, we may not be able to understand it quantitatively given, I mean, it's not something you can prove with a you know, scientific explanation, but our faith kind of points to the question of, you know, even creation itself has fallen. But that's not what God willed. That's not what God, you know, ultimately intended. So what God intended was is that creatures would exercise their free will and freely love and follow, you know, follow as well. So, it's um just enjoy cooking first, Father. No, 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 please, please. No, no, that's fine. No, this is more this is this is more enjoyable than the cookie to tell you the truth. Uh, yeah. uh, Jimmy is Jimmy is, is a lawyer. Uh, yeah. And she's in yeah, she was just telling me, she was just telling me. Absolutely. That I'm more familiar with Father Dan. Oh, Father Dan, yeah. <laughs> So I was a philosophy major, so I didn't I didn't take any I didn't take any law classes. No, so although I think there were some there were a number of law students who did take some philosophy classes. There were some who did do this. Right, exactly. So there was also kind of a quasi double major of philosophy and economics. There was also something where some people could do. I don't know if it's still there, but but um, no, it was a great education. It was a great. It's a great experience. Oh no, that is true. No, that is true. Um, no, he went to Princeton. We all grew up well. We all grew up right in 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 the Bronx. But he, he went to he went to Princeton as my other brother did. So we had two brothers went to Princeton and went to so, well, of course we know which is superior. Really, really <laughs> oh. Thank you for mentioning Sis Lewis. Oh oh, oh sure. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Screw the play. Screw the letters. That's right. Oh, <laughs> it's it's a um, you know actually I mean. I mean, again, I, I've taught a course on this on this very question. I taught an entire course on it, and and actually, the screw tape letters is another thing where he talks about it. And at one point, one of my favorites in that in the in those letters is because you have, you know the idea behind the, the screw tape letters. It's been, you know that you know this kind of this uh, senior devil is now kind of teaching his apprentice devil how to turn people away. So he talks about the enemy is God. You know the enemy, and, and so he says he says the one thing that we can't beat, the one thing we can't stop is when someone, thinking that the enemy has abandoned him, just simply picks himself up and continues serving. It says the one thing the devil cannot stop is when if somebody, even though their life has fallen apart, they just pick themselves up and just continue to serve him, that that's, that's the one thing that, that, can't be, uh, that can't be erased away. Um, no, the screw table is absolutely beautiful, a beautiful work. But I just love the fact that, you know, someone who provided so much comfort for so many people, you know, when he himself experienced it, he found that, it, you know, um, I've never seen it confirmed, but there's one book talks about the story that he was sitting in his study, and he's surrounded by all the books that he's written, and he didn't want to read any of it. So he picked up, I think, his, um, you know, his uh, adopted son's, you know, one of his notebooks, and he just started writing, you know, where is God when you need him, and he started, you know, this kind of rambling. But at the end of the story, you know, he just kind of is content to live with the mystery, saying this. He says, if God could tell me something with the child, you know, you just simply don't understand. You know, so it is. That's what it is. Now, again, it's not the it's not the answer a philosopher would want, and. You know, and, and you know, when you read these different arguments that go back and forth in terms of trying people who try to say that, you know, it is consistent theism, atheism, you know, would say that, you know, the, um, you know, because again, even the evidential problem, the idea is that, you know, that the, the, the existence of evil makes it less likely that God doesn't exist. 
Well, but what does that prove? You know, um, I've never been to the Philippines. But I've met too many people who come from the Philippines to doubt the fact that the Philippines really exist. I can't say, you know, I've never been there myself. So, but if I had never met anyone from the Philippines, okay, would if, and if I'd say, well, okay, I haven't met anybody, so I have less evidence that the Philippines actually exists. What does, what does that prove? It doesn't prove anything, because the Philippines clearly exists, you know, clearly does exist. So when you, so the, even the evidential problem to say it makes it less likely that God exists, well, what does that mean? I mean, that really doesn't mean anything. But then, but it's very hard, though, to argue against, though, their argument of what they call, you know, um, moral skepticism, that if you say that, you know, if everything's willed by God and every... You know, and every evil God can, well then, why fight evil? You know, why go to a doctor if you've got, you know, why fight the cancer? Why do, I mean, because God's got some bigger picture. Why do you do that? And so, so, but that's why revelation, but what does Jesus always say? He says, fight against it, resist evil, resist him, turn to, you know, turn to prayer and he will, you know, and the devil will flee. Um, you know, evil is something to be combated against. Evil is supposed to be something that's supposed to be fought against. So that's why Revelation tells, kind of answers the questions that, you know, kind of are rational thinking alone can't. So it's, um, but it's the, it's the number one question. There was a survey done about uh, 12, 13 years ago that said, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? Overwhelming. Why is there evil in the world? Yeah, it's, it's the the oh, here's the boss. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Having a wonderful time. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That's 